Welcome to my updated advanced comet tracker guide for 2020 that many of you have requested as some information of my previous guide from the last year are a bit outdated and the creators of the advanced comet tracker plugins have made this much easier than ever before. So without further ado, let's start with the updated version. Hell, it's about time. But again, when this is the first time hearing about the advanced combat tracker, it is the best damage meter you can have in Final Fantasy XIV. So when venturing on the DPS analysis journey, and if you want to make it look like the one I'm using in my videos, this is the way to go. Nonetheless, you need to remind yourself that being a third party software, the ACT is technically not allowed to use and it violates the terms of service of Final Fantasy XIV, from a legal point of view at least. Still, if you don't use the data to harass other people or publish wildly that you're using the advanced combat tracker, no one is going to ban you or anything. Use it for your own purpose and let others enjoy the game in the way they want, and you will be fine. Yo, Yoshi P, how many more days am I gonna stream in here, man? How many more days? How many more days? 3 days? 28? To start the installation, just use the link in the description, or if you don't trust links, just throw up Google and search for advanced combat tracker. Hit up that download section and navigate towards that setup link. Click it, save it and open the download folder afterwards. Here I highly recommend to right click on the setup X, to run some troubleshooting in advance by heading to security and check the unblock box to avoid any protection to interfere with the installation process. Above that you can head to the compatibility tab to check the box run this program as an administrator to make sure this will always start with administrator rights, which is also required for the program itself to work properly. After that double click or open that setup file and choose the install path or destination folder. In my case I created an advanced combat tracker folder inside of the folder where my Final Fantasy installation can be found. If you don't want a start menu folder just check that box below and either way click on install afterwards and wait for the installation to finish and click on close again. Then we navigate towards the installation path where you installed the ACT and repeat the previous security troubleshooting step, which means right click onto your ACT application and navigate into the compatibility section again and checking the box run this program as an administrator to ensure that each time you're starting ACT it will automatically run this with administrator rights that are required to make it work properly. Next up we got the firewall troubleshooting, which means you need to create a firewall exception rule that your Windows firewall doesn't block the advanced combat tracker application because it requires a consistent ethernet connection and will request ethernet traffic that your firewall could possibly block interfering with your data analysis. If you got a specific not Windows firewall, try to find the exception rule section by yourself and create a rule for the ACT application. In Windows, just type in firewall into your search bar, then click on the Windows Defender firewall with advanced security app and navigate towards the inbound rules section in the upper left corner. Then move to the right corner to the new rule and then click it. Then choose program, click on next and now you're asked to specify the program's installation path, where now you need to find the advanced combat tracker app. Mark and open it, click on next and allow the connection. Click on next again and we leave all the boxes checked on where does this rule apply. Maybe give it a name like ACT for example and click on finish. Then for being on the safe side of things, do this for the x86 version as well. So navigate towards adding a new rule and do the same path specification again, but this time click on that x86 version, which isn't used in most of the cases, but to avoid any hassle, let's do this. For real in-depth troubleshooting, or if you really cannot get it done and it looks like a firewall issue, you could also repeat the whole step for the outbound rule as well or maybe even try to disable the firewall for a short moment to check whether it's a firewall related issue. Now finally you can start the advanced combat tracker application and if this message appears you are notified that it will run with administrator rights when clicking on yes. After that and upon the first start of this application it will open up the installation wizard that is more like an installation black mage for the insane amount of help it offers. Here you should click on that down spotted arrow and choose the Final Fantasy XIV parsing plugin and click on that big download enable plugin button. Then click on OK and next and when being asked if ACT is used for Final Fantasy XIV, this is no trick from Yoshi P to fool you into admitting your TOS violation, but just a file checkup to prepare some installation magic. So click on yes here. Then you can also check the box auto load recently changed log files and head for next again. Leaving that auto version checkbox checked is also a good thing, so click on close and then we are going into the next section. And now comes the big change to the previous version. The amazing ACT and its plugin creators have connected the overlay installation into the ACT application itself. So under the plugins tab, navigate towards that get plugins field in the upper right corner. 
And here you can directly choose the Final Fantasy XIV Plus Others Overlay plugin, click on Download and Enable and witness the amazing installation Blackmagic flow into your application. Of course, this installation cast takes quite some time, so don't throw any movement or impatience in there. After these hardcast installations, the overlay plugin point DLL will appear inside of your ACT and under plugins you now got many new tabs that you can start working with. Under that overlay plugin tab you can see that it changed from the previous Rainbow Mage version, but on the other hand implemented tons of new features, so props to NGLD or Nagled or however the creator is called. Anyways, now we want to add a new preset. In my case it would be the Kagero overlay, whose link you also don't have to put in there manually. Just hit up that preset and everything will work perfectly. Of course, you can also choose different overlays if you want. In either way, if you have chosen one of these plugins, reload the overlay once or maybe also restart the ACT application and then start your Final Fantasy XIV game to make sure everything runs perfectly fine, which should be the case now. If no issues are recognized by your ACT app, you can navigate to the ACT application again and under plugins and Final Fantasy XIV settings and click on the test game connection. If everything runs properly, you will get this message. And that's it for the basic installation. Ok, now let me spend some additional minutes on my tips for configuring the Kagero skin or tweaking some nice settings to ACT itself. First of all you need access to the Kagero menu, which makes this preset or skin so amazing through all the adjustment possibilities we got there. So head for these three little dots and click on that wheel to open up the Kagero menu. If you want your character's name to be displayed for example, you need to put it in this little line for pet merging matters and especially into the miscellaneous section in the ACT app itself under data correction and put the desired name into the upper box and click on apply and on the next reload or restart of the skin it will be displayed in that way. And if you just want the Kagero skin to look like the one I am using, head for the code in the description and copy it to your computer's cache. Navigate towards the Kagero's menu again and head for that import export section on the bottom left side. Paste the link onto the empty line and click on import and when being asked to apply the settings click on yes. You can always reset the whole thing to default so don't worry about it. Still two settings are not being copied, the UI scale and the transparency of the navigation header. So configure them to your personal desires and enjoy a very clean and ordered UI that is quite the opposite of my inventory. Nonetheless, let me cover the most important adjustments you need to know about for getting it done by yourself, especially for implementing your own custom background picture that many people have asked about in the previous video. Therefore, we head to the style tab and head to the image section. Here you have to put a picture link into the following code embraced by URL, open parenthesis, single quote, the picture link and then after it a single quote again followed by close parenthesis. Then click on save and the picture should be put into the background of your Kagero window. As mentioned, if you want to create a picture link on your own, just visit a website like de.imgbb.com or something else and upload a picture or wallpaper. Click on it and make sure to use a browser that has a show graphic function. Only then you have a clean picture link you can always return to and use frequently. I personally like to have a Word document to save my ACT picture links in, so I'm able to occasionally switch my background images. That directly leads to the next topic. Always make sure that you're using a dark background or dark areas on a specific image where any values are shown, otherwise you will have issues to get them displayed properly or seeing them properly. To help with that you can make use of the class borders under the gauge colors section that are also displayed in the job specific class colors from the default settings. Here you can play around with the opacity and you should always attune this on the brightness level of your background image. If you have a dark and gloomy background with little content behind your data, you can simply turn the color down to highlight the impression and the mood of the background image. But if you have a bright background with a colorful tone, you should use a heavier opacity to give your data a line to prevent it merging with the background, making it nearly unreadable. Above that, under the style section, make sure to adjust the gauge height to somewhere close to 85 or 100% to have that gauge underlying your data exactly. Another important section is found under tab. Here you can adjust which information you want to be displayed or hidden from anything like death counts, critical hit values, onto the basic DPS, job icon and name selection that I'm using in my preset. Try to play around with all your desires and note that this can be adjusted for each section differently, healing, tanking or DPS. The last thing I want to mention here is the out of the box setting of the target HP bar coming with the advanced combat tracker itself. And to make adjustments here we need to switch over to the advanced combat tracker to the plugin tab while catching another target. 
Here you can see the required values behind the screen position section, where the first two values are the X and Y position, the third is the width and the last is the height. And while I'm not using this bar anymore, this would be the way to do it. Adjust the first two values by yourself, but you can easily copy the last two into your boxes. Above this, you can also change the font of the text that is displayed on which I also recommend you to check the height name box for not having the target's name displayed twice. Then you could play around with the colors of the HP bar, matching the remaining health of the target. But the standard setting is really good, I think. This can maybe be adjusted according to the boss you're dealing with. For example, having a transition at 80% life, you have to be aware of. Then you just change the 75 to 80 and grant it a more striking color tone. I hope that this updated version can clarify some questions and is able to get rid of certain installation trouble and above all that shows the insanely optimized installation method those diligent ACT and plugin and Kangaroo skin guys created. So a shout out to Hibiya Kuriyama, Ravan, NGLD and the ACT creators for this amazing package of software tool. My personal thanks to all of you. Without your consistent work on this program, my YouTube content would not stand where it does now. Thanks a lot and keep it up. And of course, if you want to see me failing at my personal DPS goals, check out my Twitch livestreams for any form of Final Fantasy XIV content. Thanks for watching, many thanks to my amazing patrons and until next time, take care and don't talk about the tracker guys. If someone asks about it, you're always calculating with pen and paper, right?